Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Uh, Mama Duna, you're the first person to join us today. That's amazing. <laughs> right on the dot. <clears throat> good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to Jesus as Jesus. That prayer, 5 a.m. prayer to be exact. <laughs> Uh, somebody said, why do you just say pray? We say 5 a.m. prayer because it is 5 a.m. in the morning. Uh, we know that we've got people who are joining us from other parts of the world. So wherever time it is there for you. Um, good morning, good day. Uh, it's such an exciting time for us to be together. And uh, we believe in God for his faithfulness. Even this morning, God was so good to us yesterday. Um, he has been so good to us this week. And uh, we have an opportunity to plug in today. So uh, we do not take it lightly that you're here. We do not take it lightly uh, that God gives us this opportunity for us to connect. Something as little as network, right, is, is just a blessing from God. So we thank God for everything. We thank God for the light stand. We thank God for the connect. <laughs> we thank God that you made it up this morning. Um, uh, God is intentional in every way. So we are so, so grateful. Somebody says, good morning, I'm from Bulawayo, Zimbabwe, thank you so much. Ndip, that's all I know, Ndip. <laughs> thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, all right, you'll see everybody's writing, good morning, good morning means the Lord is good. He's been good to us, we have another opportunity to see another day. His mercies are, 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 are new every single morning and it's such a blessing for us to be able to wake up to them. We're going to give everybody just a few minutes. Uh, just to log on um, but before we get into it but uh, how about you go ahead and tag a friend uh, somebody you know is supposed to be here maybe the alarm maybe they snoozed a bit too long you know um, uh, help them be be the reminder hmm? be the friend who goes the extra mile uh, to make sure that they're here and that uh, they're with us um, they look like they're behaving the puppies there in the background uh, but I can't prepare today any mistake you understand <laughs> but yeah let's just give them a minute or so just to join us um, uh, before we get started i'm going to advise you to grab your bible uh, grab your note bag note bag notebook um, uh, and just be ready to take some notes uh, particularly the prayer points quickly just write it down you know in the what handwriting is this second paper last 30 minutes handwriting you know you know that handwriting where it starts to be wavy and it's just going quickly write down those notes and i really want to encourage you to pray this morning um uh, you're not here to watch us you're not here to observe and see what it is even if it's your first time we want to encourage you that uh, this is a, a an active part of, uh, of of a life is that we pray we pray so as long as you can hear us well um take whatever position you're taking in the room uh, sit up if you're still in bed make sure that you're not passing out um, uh, walk around if you need to walk around to pray um, uh, you know take whatever position that's going to assist you uh, to be able to absorb and take in what we're speaking today uh, but uh, without any waste of time let's get started uh, they're sleeping this is so good <laughs> so good i just need the team to let me know about the sound and then we we can get into it. Uh, we're going to do what we do best here, and that's to stand in the gap and to exercise the authority that God has given us. God says that the same spirit that's in Jesus Christ is the same spirit that's in us. What does that mean? It means authority. It means we don't live this life timid and frail and weak. It means we have an opportunity uh, to be God's children here on earth, and we're very intentional about it. What are some of the things that we saw that Jesus was as he walked the earth? And continues to be and that is somebody who is aware and stands in the gap for others if somebody is sick he, he provides healing if somebody is discouraged or needs understanding he provides it so we are very very uh, intentional about playing our part and and we do this here on Jesus as Jesus at on our prayer mornings by picking a friend choosing a friend there's so many names here 
Uh, there's just under 2,000 of us here. So pick a friend, <laughs> you know, more the merrier. Pick a friend um, uh, and um, uh, we're going to choose to pray for them this morning. What do we use to pray for them? We use God's vocabulary. What's God's vocabulary? It's God's word. What's our vocabulary? God's word. I don't know what to pray for someone. I don't know what to say. Like, I don't know how to pray. That's great. You're in the right place. All you got to do is use God's word. What does God's word say? You're blessed, therefore you are blessed. What does God's word say? That you are protected and graced by God, loved by God. That's what you're going to say. And I want to assist us today uh, when we're picking our friends and praying over them. Um, you're more than welcome to tag them. Uh, you're more than welcome to be praying for somebody that you know you need to stand in the gap. Um, but I want to give you Psalms 41, Psalms 41, verse 2. This is what we're going to stand on as we pray for our friends here on our Jesus is Jesus, that family, that Lord, we're trusting you with this word. This is our vocab this morning. And our vocab goes as follows. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon this earth. And thou will not deliver him into the will of his enemy. The Lord will preserve him. Now you've chosen a friend today, right? I see some of you are tagging people. Uh, somebody, somebody says, no, uh, no, um, no, Basi for argument's sake. I think Zanella is taking uh, Basi. So Zanella, when you read this part of scripture, you're going to say the Lord has preserved Basi and kept Basi alive. Basi shall be blessed upon this earth and will not be delivered into the will of Basi's enemies. Father, I pray over Basi that your word says you will preserve them, that you will keep them, that they will live, that you have provided life and life in abundance. Am I making sense this morning? That's the word that you're going to stand on. So choose a friend that you're standing in agreement with and that you're standing upon this word then from this word start speaking a good word over them start blessing them uh, protecting them praying that god stays faithful and great to them and wonderful to them so we're looking at psalms 41 verse 2 the lord will preserve them keep them alive he shall bless them upon the earth when you're speaking about the earth you're speaking about their physical tangible needs that lord if they need housing you provide it if they need shelter you provide it if they need healing you provide it if they need peace of mind you provide it if they need earthly needs and things that lord, that are standing in in the gap or in the way from them reaching uh, and living out the desired life that you've chosen for them lord god we're standing in the gap this evening does that make sense let's pray father in the mighty name of jesus christ we thank you this morning uh, i've got belo um this morning belo i'm going to be praying for you uh, this morning choose your friend choose whoever um it doesn't have to be somebody you know stand in agreement with them use use your authority this morning father god i pray for belo i pray in the mighty name of jesus christ your word over them thank you lord jesus that you say that you will preserve her you will keep her alive and she will be blessed upon the earth and she will not be delivered into the hands of her enemies in the mighty name of jesus christ uh, we come before you standing upon this word we thank you for your faithfulness we thank you lord god that you are god who keeps us alive we thank you that you are god lord god who preserves us Shoo! you're a god who preserves us thank you lord god that you take care of us but beyond just giving us our needs you you are able lord god to give us lasting sustaining power preserve us thank you lord god that you keep us alive you keep us active you keep us moving you keep us blessed you keep us graced you keep keep your wonderful love surrounding us at all times this morning lord god i pray your grace over her in the mighty name of jesus christ that you will bless her lord god from the top of her head to the soul of her feet thank you lord god that you stand as her god as her ruler as her lord as her father thank you lord god that upon this earth lord god whatever need that she may have that father god you preserve her on earth and the life to come thank you lord jesus that whatever needs she may have we bless the work of her hands we bless her lord god that her mind is sound her body is sound in the mighty name of jesus christ we come against any form of anxiety stress worry uh, depression in the mighty name of jesus christ we speak your peace over her uh, father i pray that you will impress upon her heart a desire to run after you to seek after you to pursue you to 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 seek you out 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak a grace over her life, Lord God, that, that, that gives her zeal to go for the things that you want her to go. I pray for her ears, Lord God, that they'll be spiritually sharp, that she'll be able to hear your voice, follow through with your command. Lord God, that she'll be a young commander on earth, uh, one, Lord God, that lives out her salvation, one, Lord God, that turns others to you, one, Lord God, that lives out the mandate that you've called her to live in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. We call her blessed. We cover her with the blood of Jesus. We say it is well with her and her family. It is well, Lord God, with whatever she lays her hands to do. It is well with her mind, her body. It is well with her relationships. It is well with her friendships. It is well with her work. It is well with her studies. Lord God, whatever that she is uh, committing herself and time to right now. Lord God, we thank you that you make a way in the wilderness for her. Thank you that you create a stream, a river in a desert for her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, I speak to her spirit, man. If she's been feeling down, if she's been feeling discouraged, Lord God, we send forth your word, your word that it electrifies us, your word that ignites us, your word that gives us zeal. Lord God, we remind her that she is a light and salt in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, that she's born for such a time as this, that Lord God, you have chosen her, you have set her apart, you have called her for this, Lord God, that everything about her, from the way she looks to the way she sounds, Lord God, to the family she was born into, from the friends and the network and community she has, that Lord God, none of it is a mistake, that you knew why you placed her there, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord God, Holy Spirit, that you'll continue to bring to light, Lord God, purpose, mandate, Lord God, give her the the zeal and the strength and the wisdom to walk in it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come speak a good word over your friend this morning, that it is well with them, that God preserves them, keeps them alive, that he blesses them upon this earth, that no enemy has power to sweep into their lives, no enemy has power to take control over their lives, that God says, I will not hand you over to your enemies, meaning your enemies don't have power to take you. Woo! Your enemies don't have power to take you. God says, I will not hand you over to your enemies. They don't have the capacity to snatch you out of God's hand. They don't have the capacity to derail you and move you away from what God has intended over your life. They do not have the capacity. You would have to give them permission for that. God says, I personally will not hand you over to them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we honor you, Lord. We thank you for this time that we're about to get into this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That Lord God, we're preserved by you. Oh, I don't know who needs to hear that. That God preserves us. He preserves us. Every time I speak about preserving, I use the same example. I want you to think of, 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 of those peaches. Are those peaches? Our moms used to take those old jars, clear jars. And they would take peaches from the tree that grew in our gardens and they would chop them up and put a solution around them that would make those peaches that they picked months ago still be there in December when she's opening up <laughs> for dessert after Sunday lunch. So what was meant to live, what was meant to be potent, what was meant to be useful, what was meant to be nourishing, what was meant to be there, right? God has an ability to take you in and, and pour his blood all over you, pour his grace all over you, pour his mercy all over you, pour himself onto you, that, that you become preserved, that, that, that you last longer than what, what, what you were meant to last, that you, you, you stay in good condition. Though. So God wants to preserve you. I don't know whose word that is this morning. That he wants to preserve you. So I know it's the end of the year and, and you're feeling a little bit tired. I know it's month end and we're stressed because the bills need to be paid and, and, and we're starting to calculate the numbers. And, you know, yesterday I had to literally reprimand myself and I was like, hey, I need to sleep because I could feel the pressure and the worry of just like, Lord, how's this going to happen? How's this going to happen? How's this going to happen? And, and God says, I am the God who preserves. 
I give you longevity. I give you endurance. I give you strength. I give you the ability to live longer than, 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 than the time that's been mandated for you. So if people say, ah, she'll only last this long. God says, I pour out my preservation. Ah, this company of hers will only last for so long. I pour out, uh, uh, you know, my preservation. Ah, the ministry can only go so long. God says, I pour out myself over you to preserve you. I can only study for so long. You know, remember the God who preserves. Who gives you the ability to go far beyond the set limitations that's placed there. Woo! Thank you, Holy Spirit. How about we pray that this morning before we start? Mm, thank you, Lord Jesus. Pour out yourself. Pour out yourself. Pour out yourself, Lord God. You're the one who preserves us. Pour out yourselves. You're the one who keeps us. Pour out yourself. Pour, pour yourself on us this morning. Be the solution that keeps us alive. Uh, be the solution that, 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 that blesses us. Be the solution that gives us longevity, that preserves us, that gives us the provision, that, 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 that helps us to, to live, that sustains us. Shall we pray that this morning? Pour yourself on us, Lord God. Oh, we want more of you. We want more of you. Lord God, we're here and, and, and there's a set time that we live. There's a set time that our bodies are able to carry us. There's a set time that our minds is able to go without going under pressure. There's a set time, Lord God, that frustration and stress and anxiety can kick in. But this morning, Lord God, we're excited at knowing that, Lord God, you're the one that preserves us. Meaning, Lord God, whatever that was set as a limitation, you are able to take us far beyond Mm. Be the solution that, that has poured all over us, Lord God, that preserves us this morning. Preserve us, O God. Some of us are feeling tired and worn out because it's the end of the year, Lord God. We feel it. We've given out our best shot, but this year knocked us over. We, we don't know how we're getting over these last months. We, we don't know if we have the physical capacity, the mental capacity, the, the, the energy, Lord God, it takes to, to live. But you preserve us. Pour yourself on us, Lord God. Others, Lord God, it's month end and the numbers are starting to click and the anxiety is starting to sneak in and the worry, Lord God, I still haven't gotten a job and I still don't have a check to cover that and I still don't know how I'm going to be able to close that money and I still owe this one, this one and I still need to figure out how rent is going to be paid and, and I'm worried they're coming to fetch the car to repossess it and I'm worried that, you know, they're about to, the sheriffs are about to knock on the door and Father, we just want to say you're the God that preserves us. Far beyond when the sheriff knocks, far beyond when rent is paid or unpaid, far beyond when our stresses are manifest and have settled down. You're the God who preserves us. Pour yourself on us today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So over the past couple of weeks, I'm just going to take the sound down. Over the past couple of weeks, we've um, sort of started a system, if you call it that, or a way of doing things where we really take bits and pieces of, of, of the morning prayer to look at what we looked at the previous night in, in Bible study but in forms of a, of a prayer point. And I think this is important because um, it helps us digest the word a little bit more, but also for us to apply and to see how it fits into our daily lives. And, and yesterday we were, we were looking at Paul and Silas in Acts 16. We were looking at it from, from verse 11. Okay, boy, just let me know if the sound is fine. From verse 11. And, and we were looking at just how, how a moment 
of trusting God and, 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 and pushing through in God and doing what God says uh, leads them into prison, right? Leads them into a place where their lives are turned around. It speaks a lot to, to, to us as Christians sometimes, uh, the truth that we don't tell. Um, from a pulpit or from a ministering or from a one-on-one -on -one, uh, sharing with our friends and loved ones it, it, the truth about this life the, the reason God preserves us is because we need to be preserved the, the reason why he keeps us because there's a need for us to be kept <laughs> the reason why he says you're a fortified city i will be with you i am your protection i will protect you i will fight for you is because we need to be fought for we we need to be protected meaning life happens to us and oftentimes people come to christianity because it's either a, a free ticket to heaven uh, a, a no return ticket to heaven or it's a tool for us to live a comfortable life here on earth and that's why we get frustrated when when we now take this god and we trust this god and 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 we start serving this god and things don't go our way then we want to get angry at him because we're like ha ah, what's the what's the point what's the point the point is you need salvation <laughs> whether things are good or bad you need this god whether things are rosy or, or, or they're tricky you you need this god whether things are nice and smooth and and and, and flowing in the way that you want uh, uh, or, or things are deca decaring you you need salvation and most of us when we're faced with trials and tribulations, like a, like a Paul and Silas in this case, we, 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 we half step on our relationship with God because uh, it was never really about God and his saving grace and his love and, and our communion with him. Uh, it was how, how, how dare do we land up in prison after we seek you? And God says, that's why I'm the preserver. And, and, and Paul and Silas in this part of scripture become a perfect example of that. And we, we went into depth with it. So if you did not get an opportunity to join us last night, I want to give you an opportunity. Like I want to encourage you rather uh, to go and, and watch yesterday's live just to get context of what we're doing. But I think you still will be able to follow us this morning. So we read from verse 16. And our first prayer point this morning is verse 16, 25, and 40. Somebody sent me a message going, 16, 25, 40. That's a secret code. Wherever we are, if we bump into each other, just say 16, 25, 40. Right? That's the numbers. What do we mean by 16, 25, 40? Is we look at Paul and Silas, and the Bible tells us in verse 16, 16, 25, 40, that one day as we were going down to the place of prayer, One day as we were going to the place of prayer, they came across a girl who was enslaved and was under demonic possession. And what do they do on this faithful day? They see her and she comes back day after day after day and, and then they exercise their authority. What is exercising their authority? They say in verse 18, we command that in the name of Jesus, that spirit to come out of her. So they exercise their authority. They live out their faith. One day when they were going down to the place of prayer. 25, verse 25. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening. Shaha Kaba. Verse 14. When Paul and Silas left prison, they returned to the home of Lydia. There they met with other believers and encouraged them once more again before they left. Shaha Kaba. What's our prayer point? It's very simple. 16, 25, 40. Before, during, 
after. So we are making a declaration to God this morning to say, like Paul and Silas, Lord God, before they were in prison, they were praying. The Bible tells us in verse 16, they were going to the place of prayer. They had an, a set appointment with God. They, had, they, were, they were intentional about their prayer life. They were intentional about their communion and fellowship with God. They were intentional. So it's not something they started doing because they were thrown in prison. It's not something they started doing because they were faced with trials and tribulations. It's not something they started doing because there was no money to pay for school fees. It's not something they started doing because their children started acting wild and crazy. It's not something they started because their spouses were starting to do other things and they wanted to contain the marriage it's not something they started because they were looking for that job opportunity or or that financial breakthrough no it's something that they were doing before they were put into prison so our first prayer point this morning is before during and after it's 26 or 16 25 40 that father we will live out our salvation our relationship with you is our priority. It's you that we want. Yesterday we said what brings us to God is not circumstances. What brings us to God is his grace, is his love, is the fact that he loved us before we even knew him and comprehended the magnitude of the love that he surrounds us with. It's the fact that he has graced us, that even though we're undeserving and sinful, he trades our sinful life with life and life in abundance and life in eternity. It's the fact that he orchestrates daily a way to commune with us. It's the fact that he loves us beyond our faults and our shortcomings. It's the fact that he's with us continuously. So why are we a 16, 25, 40? Why are we a before, during, after? It's because this God loved us before we were formed in our mother's womb. He says he knew us. He had plans for us, so, 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 so I love on him because he loved on me so beautifully. Hey, even during the mess that I found myself in, even through that time when my mother was sick and my body gave up on me and I didn't have a job and, and, and I didn't know how I was going to go to school. In the time, in the season of prison, I still saw his hand over my life. And even after, after I was doing well, after I bought my first property, after I bought my first car, after I was able to do this and that, and after I was able to get a show here and, and get money there and travel here and do amazing things, he, he didn't stop. He didn't say, hey, he still continues to love and cover me and, and, and protect me. So this is our prayer point. Lord God, we're the generation of the before, during, after. We are the 16, 25, 40. Let's pray this morning. However way you want to put it, whatever that's going to make it sink in into your mind and your heart this morning, whether it's a 16, 25, 40, whether it's a before, after, or during, that Father, I yield my life to you. I refuse in the mighty name of Jesus Christ to be a circumstantial uh, a server, to be a circumstantial child of God. L Lord God, to look at you as a genie in a bottle that I've got to rub you three times for you to pop up and do the things that I want you to do. But when, when, when you're not doing it my way, I'm nowhere to be seen. When I'm living the life that I want and I'm driving the the car that I want and I'm living the life that I want that I've got no regard for you because I've forgotten the mercy and the grace you had over my life to take me out of prison. I, I forget the grace and the mercy that I had even before I went into prison. Father, we are the 16, 25, 40, whether before, during, after, with the generation that at any given time that you will come across us, whether we're going through prison, whether we're walking the streets praying, whether we're about to leave prison and you've set us free, Lord God, in every state we are surrendered unto you our lives are surrendered unto you we give you everything that we have lord god we we're not going to be triggered by circumstances to acknowledge you as god we're not going to be triggered by circumstances to remember that we need to pray and to seek you and to have fellowship with you and to study the word to show ourselves approved we're not going to fast because we're facing a mountain only lord god we're going to fast even when there's no mountain because we want communion with you we're not going to pray because we need you to tear down the prison walls we're gonna pray even when there's no prison walls lord god even when you've set us free we're not only gonna forget that you've done good to us lord god but we're going to be the ones that stay lord god a life of prayer a life of reading the word a life of being surrendered and yielded to you is who we are it's what we do we come against the spirit lord god of circumstances lord god where we we, we are moved and, and and programmed by circumstances to remember you as god we refuse 
presence, Lord God, for our relationship with you to be controlled by circumstances. We refuse to bow to circumstances. We refuse to yield to circumstances. It's you who is our God. It's you who is our Lord. It is you who is our Savior. It is you who is our Father. Father God, we're the generation of the before, the after, and the during. We're the generation of the 16, 25, 40, Lord God. When we're walking the streets, we're praising and praying and lifting you up. When we're inside the mess and trials and tribulations, easy vungu vungu are messing us up left, right, and center. It does not change our position with you. We do not forget who we are in Christ because of circumstances. Circumstances do not have that much power over us. I wrote here, we're not going to trade our relationship with you for temporary fixes. We're not going to allow circumstances We refuse to trade our relationship with you. We refuse to trade our relationship with you for, 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 for fixes. For, 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 for earthquakes, shaking, prisons. We, we refuse that that's the only time we interact with you. We want to stay. We, we want to stay. We want to stay. Our, our, we're not shifted. We've settled that where you are is where we want to be. Our relationship with you is not based on performance. It's, it, it is based on love and grace and mercy. Ooh, let that sink in a little bit. It's, it's not based on performance. The same way you don't look at our performance as a justification to love us. How, God, can we then look at you and put performance as an indicator and a mark in order for us to come to you? We're a generation that seeks and yearns after you. We want you, Lord. Ooh, we refuse. I don't know about you, but, but, but I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse that that will be a continuation of my walk with God. Sixteen, twenty-five, forty, gang. See, see, see. The sixteen, twenty-five, forty rule, if I could call it that. A way of life goes goes beyond it being beneficial just for you. It becomes something that is far beyond just your personal needs, but becomes something that begins to impact even those around you. See, most of us come to God for 25 because we want to get out of the situation that we're in, the problems that we're in. But if it's the 16, 25, 40, it has a direct impact on the people around you. So it doesn't just become your miracle. It just it doesn't just become your breakthrough. It, it doesn't just become yours, but it, it becomes your family's. What do I mean by that? And that leads us into our second prayer point. And our second prayer point is verse 29, or starting from verse 29. And as the story goes, God creates a huge earthquake. The prison walls are broken down to its foundations. The, uh, the prison doors, walls are flung open. The chains that were on all the prisoners' feet and hands are, are broken and, and, and fall off. It's a miraculous act. And, and the jailer who was placed there to take care 
of them. The Bible tells us that this jailer had one job and that was to make sure that they don't escape. And the Bible tells us that when this jailer saw and realized that this earthquake had taken place and that the prison was now demolished, he, he drew a sword ready to kill himself because he thought that the one thing that he was there for he failed at it. He was hopeless. He felt that he could not live beyond that part. And verse 29 is the jailer and as he calls for the lights and runs to the dungeon and falls by his feet. Before Paul and Silas and says to them in verse 30, Sirs, what is it that I can do to get saved? This is our prayer point. The massive earthquake, as the Bible calls it, was a display of God's power. And if, 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 if Paul and Silas were not living the life that they were leading, somebody could have assumed that that earthquake came as a result of natural disaster. But the prisoners and the jailer knew that the earthquake was a response to the prayers and the hymns that Paul and Silas were lifting up to God, that they were demanding God's power in that space, and that space could not handle God's power. What am I saying as a prayer point this morning? Locate your jailer. Locate your jailer. So, so what am I saying? The life that you lead, how you live out your life for God, how you react in trials and tribulations, how you, 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 you pull down God's power in certain situations, how you speak when you're lying on a hospital bed, how you talk when you're going into a toxic, hostile environment, how you handle yourself during conflict, how you live your life out for God daily, how you handle yourself on campus, how you handle yourself in the workplace, how you talk about you looking for a job in the state of the country. See, the Bible tells us that the prisoners were listening to Paul and Silas lifting up praises and prayer to God. They witnessed the power of God manifest and it led them to seeking this God locate your jailer let your trials and tribulations not make you run away from God but let it be an opportunity for you to present God to others See, Paul and Silas were calling on God's existence and power. They were living out their lives just as they know how to pray. They were praying when they were free. They continue to pray when they're in heaven. That was how they lived. But how they lived ended up being a portal and a pathway and a gateway for others to receive Christ. Oof, I hope you're hearing me this morning. Locate your jailer. Locate your jailer, that Lord God, I know I'm going through troubles at this work, but who's my jailer? Huh? What was meant to be the thing that takes me down? I, I now want to look for an opportunity. Remember Luke uh, 21, 13, we're looking for an opportunity to tell people about him. Locate your jailer. Every situation you were in, good or bad. Lord God, how does this turn people's eyes back to you? Locate your jailer. How, how can God use this situation in my life to, 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 to turn people's face towards Jesus? How am I living out my salvation that, that's making people go, I want this God. The Bible tells us that in verse 29, he comes to them trembling, shaking, because he is in, in awe of this great display of God's power manifested before him. And he goes to Paul and Silas and says, Paul, Silas, sirs, what is it that I can do to get saved? Do, do our lives place a demand? For people to want to get saved. Let's pray this morning that Father help us locate our jailers. What am I saying? Help us get every single opportunity and chance for us to declare Jesus. 
The Bible tells us that Paul then answered and said, you have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your family. The Bible goes on to tell us that Paul and Silas go on to teach them the word of God and goes on to baptize them. That Father, I'm available for you to use me. Show me where the jailers are. What was an inconvenience to Paul and Silas ended up becoming an opportunity for them to present Jesus. What is an inconvenience in your life and, and who does it lead you to? Woo. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you. Last week, Lord God, we remember that your word said that the, the harvest is plentiful. Help me locate my jailer. Help me locate the people, Lord God, that I have utterance for that I have the grace to speak Jesus to in my workspace, in, in my family, in a group of friends, Lord God, with my spouse, with my children, Lord God, with my group of friends on campus, Lord God. Help me locate my jailer. Give me the opportunity to present you, Christ. Give me the words, the utterance, the wisdom, uh, the grace to be able. Let me hear the Holy Spirit. Instead of running out, Lord God, help me to stay and locate my jailer. Use me as a tool for the kingdom of God. That Lord God, I'll be conscious that in and out of prison, in and out of good season, in and out of season, Lord God, that I take the opportunity to tell people about Jesus. I take the opportunity to tell them about his saving grace. I, 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 I understand that the things that I go through are not just an attack on me, but are an attempt to mute me from declaring Jesus Christ as Lord. Help me locate my jailer. such an important prayer mm, it's such an important prayer because we've come we've become complacent we we, we we we've become so comfortable in in our own world we've become so uh, uh, self-centric that everything that has to do with our faith is just about us that 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 it doesn't cross our minds that even the things we're going through good or bad are an opportunity for us to locate the jailer the Bible tells us that the same jailer who threw them in jail, after receiving God, he was filled with joy because he believed. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Locate the jailer. In Acts 16, this is our last prayer point. And you can easily take it and merge it with like a Psalms 40, 41, like we read earlier on. Is that we pray that God preserves us and gives us sustaining power. But also for us to know that God restores us. Mm. See, the interaction between Paul and Silas and, and, and the jailer and the police and the, and the, and the magistrate and the officials, it, it comes down to the fact that, that God restores them to their former glory. Paul says, you, you can't release us from prison in secret when you publicly dismantled us, when you publicly beat us up, you publicly uh, embarrassed us, humiliated us, you publicly took our freedom, you publicly uh, took from us, and now you want to just secretly uh, uh, let us go. No. The same way you, you, you did it in front of everybody, apologize publicly <laughs> and restore our freedom publicly because you took it publicly. He's a restorer. I don't know who this is for, but maybe you need to pray it over your life that God, you are my restorer. I know that divorce knocked you over. 
I know that loss threw you and completely threw you off balance. I, I, I know that that, that, that that retrenchment or loss of job threw you over. I know that that spouse really, really hurt you to the deepest core. You, you didn't expect for that to take place. I know that, that, that you could not believe that you had to close your business and, and downsize and, and move back home and, and change your life around. But he is a restorer. The things that the devil does to us publicly to humiliate us and he he thinks that he gets away with it. God is restoring and he is a restorer. Just wait on him. He's the one who clothes us with dignity. He's a restorer. So I know right now it looks like, you know, it's happening behind closed doors. God is saying, listen, I'm the one who fights for you. Paul and Silas didn't go and plea and ask to be released. In fact, if you read the Bible correctly, you realize that at the end, the police and the officials end up begging Paul and Silas to leave. He's a restorer. <laughs> and they're begging him to leave because they recognize the power of their God. They recognize that they do not have the capacity to hold them, whether they're beating them up, whether they're throwing them in the dungeon, they don't have systems built enough to contain those who contain God. So declare God as your restorer. Father, thank you for being my restorer. Come on, let's pray. You're not here to watch me. You're here to pray. Sheke mahaka, shandiri baha kasetiri ke mayandiri ha kusotokoba. Father, thank you that you are my restorer. Thank you, Lord God, that you, you restore us to our former glory. In fact, you go far beyond. Lord God, Paul and Silas, Lord God, arrived in that state as mere prisoners. By the time they left, uh, they, they, the, the officials and, and the police were begging them that please leave. The same people who imprisoned them, Lord God, are now in another position recognizing that, 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 that Paul and Silas are not ones to be messed with, are not, are not ones to be, they, God is, is too powerful for their systems. Father, I, I pray that with the situations that we face, that we may know that, that there is no system that is designed in earth or beyond, no power, no principality that has the power to withstand your ability as our God. That, that, that prisoners were publicly apologized to Sheikh Mahasada and begged to leave. The same prisoners who were chained, the same situations that locked you in, the same situation that humiliated you, the same situation that made you lose hope, the same situation that made you feel that this was it, there's nothing else that life can throw at you that can possibly hurt as much as this. Those same situations, God knows and is able to restore. God, my restorer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, please write that down. Speak that over your life, that God, you restore me. Thank you for being my restorer. Thank you for restoring me. Thank you for preserving me. Thank you, Lord God, for keeping me. Thank you that, Lord God, that you don't just let them secretly at the back release me, that, that you are conscious, Lord God, that what they did publicly, Lord God, you will restore, that you are good to me. In Jesus' name we pray. Ah, oh, come on, somebody. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. God, my restorer. They could not withstand your power. Oof. They could not withstand your power. They, they could not withstand. Even in my life, Lord God, manifest your power. Restore me. In Jesus' name we pray. Sure, we're almost out of time. Mm, I don't know what to do.
to do now. Let's go to James 1. Let's go to James 1. James 1, 22. James 1, 22. Ooh, thank you, Lord, for your word. James 1, 22. James 1, 22. Such a good word. Such a good word. So comforting, right? To know. <laughs> That as we go through the things that we go through, we know how the story ends. We know how the story ends. James 1, 22. But don't just be, uh, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Don't just listen to God's word. Don't just listen to podcasts. Don't just sit at church and listen. Don't just sit in your home cell group and listen. Don't just watch Jesus is Jesus then and listen. Don't just listen to your favorite uh, YouTube pastor. Don't just, don't just, don't just listen. Don't just listen. You must do what it says. Another translation says, but be doers of the word. <laughs> and not hearers only. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Only see, 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 it's very easy for us to, to come into a space and we hear God's word and we get excited and we it moves us, and it was just like, Oh, that felt so good, and oh, and, 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 but you don't do the word, don't just listen to the word of God, but you must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourself. See, see, we can't cheat the system. Mm, 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 mm. That's why the Bible says, what Jesus rather says to us, that he will say to us that many of you will come and say, Lord, Lord, and I will respond and say, I never knew you. Because, because just listening and not doing Asiona. <laughs> Asiona. So, so many of us are, are living in the comfort space of just hearing the word of God. We, we, we're living in the comfort space of, of calling ourselves Christians. And we go to church once in a while. And, you know, I've got a Bible, maybe two, you know, different translations. Uh, uh, I'm a Christian. I've always grown up in the church. We, we're, we're hearing God's word, but we're not doing God's word. Don't fool yourselves. It's an old school song. Who's fooling who? Are you fooling me or am I fooling you? Don't fool yourself. See, it doesn't fool God. You, you're messing up with yourself. Because you, you are leading a life that makes you feel like you've got access that you don't have. La ladies, you'll know this, even guys. Yeah, have you ever been in a relationship and, and you're thinking that the both of you are in agreement that you're in a relationship only to find out later that you're fooling yourself? You're fooling yourself. Verse 23. For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it's like glancing at your face in the mirror. You see yourself. You walk away and you forget what you look like. It's the height of deception. the height of deception see how God says it's not about fooling me you're fooling yourself it's like you looking at yourself in the mirror seeing yourself 
walking away and forgetting what you look like. Verse 25, but if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says, and don't forget what you heard, then, yeah, circle the then, you know how we do, circle the then, then, God will bless you for doing it. So why is it that it's regarded as fooling yourself when you hear the word and don't do it? Because you, you're thinking that you're hearing it, which will mean you will, end, you, you will directly get it what it is. So I'm hearing the word, so I know that I'm going to get. So I'm hearing that I'm blessed, meaning I'm blessed. I'm going to get the blessings. But the Bible says, then... God will bless you. So where does the fooling come in? It's when you think you can cheat the system of just hearing the word of God, just being close enough to, 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 to Christianity, just living and pretending this Christianity life, but not really having to obey God. And then you think you can have the benefits of relationship. You're fooling yourself. The Bible says, then God will bless you for your obedience. Then the benefits that comes out of you following God's principles will manifest. Then the promises that come with, with obedient life will follow through. Then God keeps up to his end of the bargain. Seek ye first the kingdom and then the rest shall be added unto you. Mm -hmm. wrap love and kindness around your neck then you will have favor with man and with God then so you can't just hear it you've got to do it it's our last prayer point this morning that father we're doers <laughs> see see we, we we're the 1625 40 doers <laughs> We refuse to live in this false ideology of Christianity that says that we can just read the word of God and hear the word of God and participate and interact with it, but not allow God for it to change us and transform us daily, transform our minds to daily change us inside, to move us from a state of being dead into a state of being alive, to move us from living an ungodly life to a life of godliness, a life of of righteousness we we can't just hear the word we've got to be doers of the word we can't just hear it and it tantalizes and tickles our ears and we we stand up and say amen hallelujah yes jesus i claim it good word and 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 and, and after we've heard this good word it has no effect on us What, what is a definition of a lukewarm Christian? Ah, maybe let's leave that. What does God say about lukewarm Christian? He says he spills them out. What's the definition of a lukewarm Christian? It's the one who hears it, interacts with it, surrounds themselves with it, but has no concept of, of doing and obeying what God says. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you've given us not only the grace to hear your word, but to do your word. You've given us the grace, Lord God, to pursue a life of godliness and righteousness. You've, you've given us, Lord God, the grace to live a life of obedience. You've, you've given us, Lord God, the grace not just to hear your word, but the ability to be able to push it and see it through and apply it in our lives, Lord God. Thank you. That we're not just hearers of your word, but Father God, we want to submit ourselves to being doers of your word. We want to submit ourselves to being obedient, to hearing that which you say. Uh, Lord, you call it your perfect law that sets us truly free. Woo! 
your word sets us free. We, we can't look at our liberty and walk away and forget that we're sinners, that we're loved and given freedom and access by God. Lord, we refuse to look at the mirror and forget ourselves and forget that we are the ones that Christ died for and forget that we are the ones that God pursues daily and forget we're the ones that God has shown mercy and forget we're the ones that God has been gracious to and forget that we're the ones that God has been patient. We forget that we're the ones that God has extended his love over us and forget we're the ones that God sent his one and only son to reconcile us back to him. We forget that we're the ones that God puts in right standing with himself. We forget that we're the ones, Lord God, That God declares that nothing can separate us from his love. We refuse to look in the mirror and forget ourselves. We are doers of your word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. We're doers of the word. We're doers of the word. I want you to spend the next week just looking at your life like, am I, am I living out this word? Am I, every time I read it, right? We, we just read Paul and Silas. Am I living it out? Am I doing it? It's good to hear the story of Paul and Silas, but am I doing it? Am I a 16, 25, 40? Uh, it's nice. We could put it on the status and say it, but, but am I really a 16, 25, 40? A, am I really a, a, a one that, that, that seeks the face of the Lord in all circumstances? Am I really a before, a during, and after? And if I haven't been, oh, God forbid that I will live any other day longer not living in that reality we are doers of the word we are the ones who look in the mirror and we do not forget ourselves we do not forget the mercy and the love and the freedom that God gives us in him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ amen sure God is good Cape Town we're coming through on Tuesday night, a little bit later on, the information is going to come out. Uh, hopefully, there's a lot of tickets. <laughs> Please remember, our tickets are absolutely free. It's there for you to book your space. We can't wait to, to fellowship and be with you. So please be on the lookout uh, for Cape Town. Um, yeah, God is going to be good to us and help us put it together. Um, it's been an uphill battle, but we will do it. Yeah, you know, we are doers. We are doers. That's what we do. We will do it <laughs> and live out our faith. Let me leave you with this before you all run off. And I want you in your own time to, to read it and, and see how much he loves you. It's Colossians 1 verses 13 to 14. Colossians 1 verses 13 to 14. And I close with verse 13. You were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature. Then God made you alive with Jesus Christ, for he forgave all your sins. He canceled the record of the charges against you and took it away by nailing it on the cross. Somebody asks you, how are you doing? I'm alive with Christ. I love you guys. Cape Town will see you on Tuesday night. It's going to be amazing. And from there, we'll, we'll see where next the Lord is sending us. Keep praying for us. Keep loving us. Keep showing us love when we bump into you. But let's go out there and, and live our 16, 25, 40. In Jesus' name, no longer give us weekly challenges. Okay. <laughs> Um, a weekly challenge this week is to share the word with someone. Share the word with someone. So choose a part of scripture for argument's sake. Acts 16. Learn it. Digest it. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Then call a friend visit a friend, take a friend out, call somebody you love, and share what the Lord has given you with them. Take any part of scripture 
and go share the word. Remember Paul and Silas not only said, this is how you get saved, they also took time to sit with them and teach them the word of God. So we're sharing the word of God this week. Please tag me when you do it. <laughs> Let us know. Um, God is faithful and we're excited for the work that he's doing. Have a blessed week. Don't let the frustrations and the worry and the anxiety of month end to overwhelm you. God is faithful and he's good and he takes care of us. But don't forget the challenge. Choose a part of scripture. Meditate upon that word. And then choose a friend or a family member or a colleague or your spouse or anybody who's in your life. And sit down with them and share the word of God with them. Until Tuesday, Cape Town, when we see you, and of course, next week, Thursday at 7 p.m., we've got Bible study and we've got prayer. Lots of exciting things coming up. God is doing amazing things, and we're so excited to be a part of his good works. Until we meet again, my 16, 25, 40 gang, <laughs> my doers gang, hmm? may God bless you, cover you, protect you. May he shine his face upon you. May he surround you with his goodness and his love and his mercy. May he cover you in every area of your life. But more importantly, may you feel his love embrace. May you be reminded that this God is madly in love with you. Until we meet again. 16, 25, 40. <laughs> Bye, guys.